everyone. Welcome to my channel. I am so grateful that you are here. My name is Nikki and I channel messages from film and TV shows using tarot and oracle cards. And I am so excited and honored to be doing a reading for you today. In this video, I will be channeling messages from ghost movies. And I actually had the intention for this to go out around Halloween as it entails paranormal, spiritual messages, but that didn't happen. But I'm a huge believer that this present moment is perfect and that these messages are going out when they are meant to. So ghost movies are one of my favorite genres and all three of these films are so much fun and they each have a different element of how the spiritual realm is viewed they're really funny. These are not super scary movies by any means. These were films that I were drawn to mostly because of the lighthearted energy because a lot of messages with the spiritual realm sometimes can be pretty dark or also hard to hear. So these messages that are coming through are very lighthearted in nature and also, there's an energy of a lot of people in the collective tapping into spiritual gifts or also having more supernatural experiences with the spiritual realm. So my intention for this video is to help bring some clarity, to perhaps put a smile on your face, and to just help the collective at this time on the planet that has a very chaotic energy. So I really genuinely hope that you enjoyed the reading. How the reading will work in the next part of the video, you will see three different piles. Please meditate on the pile that is speaking to you and go to the timestamps that I provide down below directly for your reference. Also, if any part of a message doesn't resonate, that's 100% okay as a lot of the messages are very general. Don't try to force something that does not fit. Only take what resonates and leave what does not. So let's jump into some channeled messages from some ghost films. Hello to everyone who chose pile number one. I am so grateful that you are here. Your ghost movie is the 1988 film Beetlejuice, directed by Tim Burton, starring Alec Baldwin, Gina Davis, Winona Ryder, and Michael Keaton. The synopsis says, Thanks to an untimely demise via drowning, a young couple end up as poltergeists in their New England farmhouse, where they fail to meet the challenge of scaring away the insufferable new owners who want to make drastic changes. In desperation, the undead newlyweds turn to an expert fright meister, but he's got a diabolical agenda of his own. Okay, let's see what your cards have to say, and disclaimer, there will be spoilers that come through the reading, so if you've not seen Beetlejuice, please be mindful of that as we move forward. Also, a lot of very general messages come through the reading, so if you find something doesn't resonate for you, don't try to force something that does not fit. Only take what resonates and leave what does not. Your first card is the Cosmic Egg, the Divine Feminine. And it says on the bottom here, I hold the universe within me. I am the force of an ever-expanding love. Okay, so what Spirit is showing me with this card is that you're ready to expand at this time. 
And this card represents the creative force that is within you. This is playing an integral role in your expansion. And I feel a lot of healing has been done with your divine feminine energy. We actually all have masculine and feminine energy within us. But the feminine energy has been pushed down for a long time. And as we all heal, both energies are rising together and being balanced. So this card also indicates that everything is as it should be. There's nothing that needs to happen. So this is a time of allowing the creative force within you to emerge into the physical in divine timing. If you try to control an outcome or try to force something to exist before it's meant to, transformation cannot occur. So in the film, married couple Adam and Barbara Maitland, played by Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis, they die in a car accident. And they find that they have become ghosts and are unable to leave their home. If they attempt to leave, they enter into this strange desert world that is filled with sandworms. And in the process of trying to navigate life after death, a family moves into their home. Charles Dietz, played by Jeffrey Jones, Delia Dietz, played by Catherine O'Hara, and Lydia Dietz, played by Winona Ryder. The Maitlands do not like their home being imposed on, so they do everything in their power to try to scare the Dietzes so they will move out of their home. Instead of accepting the present moment as it was, they kept trying to control outcomes. And every time they looked outside of themselves for answers, things never worked out in their favor. There's also this iconic dinner scene where they attempt to scare the family by possessing them. And they all sing the song, Deo, and they dance around the table. Well, at the end of the song, everyone sits down and a hand comes up out of their food and grabs their faces and pushes them back off their chairs. And after this happens, Adam and Barbara run to the window in their attic thinking that everyone's, you know, going to run out of this house screaming. But this doesn't happen. All of the people are even more intrigued with the ghosts in their house and actually want to meet them. So our ego wants to keep us safe and will attempt to get us to rush processes. The Maitlands didn't realize that the Dietzes were ultimately family to them, and that it was actually possible for the living and the dead to coexist together. Spirit is also bringing through a metaphor about awakening. It's okay for awakened people to hang out with people who are unawakened. There is no ranking and no one is better than anyone else. And sometimes when people awaken, the spiritual ego can step in where one thinks they are above other people or special. The truth is that we are all special in our own way. And every soul has the capability to ascend when they choose to do so. If they don't, that's okay as they are on their own journey. Spirit is also bringing through a message here about having more trust. What is yours can never be taken from you. In the film, the Maitlands never had their home taken from them because it was ultimately theirs to begin with. But they also learned that death was not the ending of life. It was actually a new beginning for them and led more of their soul family to them. So you may be experiencing a death and rebirth of yourself at this time. The old is wanting to leave your life so that the new can emerge in a beautiful way. Embrace this expansion and trust yourself as you are a force of ever expanding love, as it says on the bottom of the card here. <laughs> Spirit is also showing me the scene where Adam and Barbara are looking for help and they go to see Juno, played by Sylvia Sidney. 
she's a ghost that helps other ghosts navigate life after death. When they're walking down the hallway to see her, they walk past this open door, and inside they see a bunch of ghosts floating around aimlessly. The janitor in the hallway, played by Simmy Bo, tells them that this is the room where lost souls go. So for some of you, I feel you have very strong spiritual abilities, whereas you can communicate with spirits. I'm also seeing Lydia from the film. She plays a young girl who can actually see Adam and Barbara even though they are dead. So some of you may actually be able to see spirits. Or you may even help these souls transition to the next part of their journey. And this is nothing to be afraid of as Ascended Masters and Archangels assist with this process as well. Typically, these souls died in a very unexpected way, and they have an energy of confusion. Some have stayed trapped for a very long time. The card here, right under Cosmic Egg, it says the Divine Feminine. And this is the energy that is healing rapidly on the planet right now. And these souls are drawn to the unconditional love and light of many lightworkers doing the healing. And many of these souls are actually lightworkers themselves. And they're ready to reincarnate on the planet and begin assisting us with even more healing and love. So your loving energy is not only attracting amazing people into your life in the physical, but it's also attracting beautiful souls to you who are ready to transition and begin their light work in a brand new lifetime. Thank you for the very powerful work that you do. Your next card is Deceit in Reverse. You know, every time I see this card reversed, it's truly amazing. Because it means that negative and dishonest energy is on its way out of your life. In the film, Adam and Barbara don't feel like they are getting anywhere by trying to scare the Dietzes. And when they speak with Juno, they ask about the beetle guy whom they saw on television. Juno tells them to not even say his name and that they don't want his help because he doesn't work well with others. Despite Juno's warnings, though, Adam and Barbara call upon Beetlejuice, played by Michael Keaton, by saying his name three times. They quickly learn that his methods are not exactly the healthiest and that he does everything for his own personal gain. I'm actually being shown the scene where he turns into a snake to scare the Dietzes. Adam and Barbara see that he could have really hurt them, and this is where they start to have a change of heart about the Dietzes. So, I feel a strong energy of having been deceived in the past, but these experiences have made you none the wiser pile number one. Your red flag detector is on point, and I see that you no longer tolerate lies and dishonesty. This is stemming from your willingness and ability to openly communicate with people. I see if you don't know where you stand with someone, you have no issue asking questions to gain the answers you seek. And relationships can be ruined by a lack of communication and complacency. I'm also seeing that Karma is being flipped in some instances. I'm being shown the scene at the very end of Beetlejuice, where Beetlejuice is waiting to speak with Juno, and his number is in the millions. <laughs> he sees that the witch doctor next to him has the number four, so he tricks him by saying, hey, is that Elvis over there? And he switches their numbers in the process. The witch doctor proceeds to shrink Beetlejuice's head <laughs> because of this. So as you have been healing yourself and taking your power back, pile number one, 
karma has been flipped. And this doesn't mean to wish anyone negative vibes. It's just that the energy we put out, we always receive back. It's how energy balances out on the planet. Your next card is the Shekinah, Sacred Self. On the bottom here it says, Unleash your spirit, express your gifts, dance to the sacred rhythm of life. Okay, so with this card, I'm drawn to the sentence at the very bottom of the card here. Dance to the sacred rhythm of life. And I'm being shown Lydia at the very end of the film. The Maitlands and the Dietzes are living together in peace. Lydia comes home and states that she got an A on one of her tests. And she keeps asking Adam, so can I? And Adam's like, I suppose... And this is the moment where he telepathically turns on the music and Lydia starts dancing while levitating off of the ground. Spirits surround her in the background as they all dance to shake, 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 Sonora. <laughs> so Spirit is saying, it's time to unleash your spirit and express your gifts. I also feel some of you have been purging and healing trauma. I also see some of you have experienced a kundalini awakening. I too have experienced one of these awakenings. And I just watched a video from Christina Lopes recently about kundalini awakening. And she's an amazing YouTuber who offers really good guidance. And one of the things that she mentions is the importance of moving our bodies. Dancing or moving your body helps the energy flow through you easier. Also, drinking plenty of water and getting out in nature is essential as well. The energies are really heightened on the planet right now, so remaining grounded is key. Also, EFT tapping could be beneficial if you're experiencing physical symptoms. This will help the energy release powerfully as well. Your sacred self is wanting to emerge, pile number one, and you're a force to be reckoned with. Keep sharing your light with the world. Your final card is the star. I always love seeing this card because it epitomizes ultimate self-confidence and shining your light without a care in the world. In the film Beetlejuice, I'm being shown the sandworms that live in another dimension outside of the Maitland's home. So when Adam and Barbara return as ghosts in the beginning, they are terrified of the sandworms and refrain from leaving their house. But at the end, they have to figure out how to defeat Beetlejuice. And they keep trying to say his name three times, but he vanquishes them into separate places. Adam goes into the town he created in the attic, and Barbara goes into the desert with the sandworms. But as it turns out, Barbara is no longer afraid of the sandworms, and she actually rides one of them back into the house, and it eats Beetlejuice. It's a really empowering scene at the end of the film. But Spirit is showing me that you're conquering your fears left and right at this time. And this scene in the movie is a prime example of how one can befriend their fears and overcome anything. You are in the process of rejecting all limitations and dismissing any doubts that arise. And with this attitude, pile number one, all things are possible. The path before you is starting to ignite before your eyes. Blaze on, my friend. Yes. <laughs> I love that so much, pile number one. Beautiful, beautiful messages coming through the 1988 film Beetlejuice. 
If your reading resonated, if you enjoyed it, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below. Again, I am so grateful for you being here. I love you all so much, and I will see you on the next video. Bye. Hello to everyone who chose pile number two. I am so grateful that you are here. Your ghost movie is the 1995 film Casper, directed by Brad Silberling, starring Christina Ricci and Bill Pullman. The synopsis says, Furious that her late father only willed her his gloomy-looking mansion rather than his millions, Kerrigan Crittenden is ready to burn the place to the ground when she discovers a map to a treasure hidden in the house. But when she enters the rickety mansion to seek her claim, she is frightened away by a wicked wave of ghosts. Determined to get her hands on this hidden fortune, she hires afterlife therapist Dr. James Harvey to exorcise the ghosts from the mansion. Harvey and his daughter Kat move in, and soon Kat meets Casper, the ghost of a young boy who's the friendliest ghost you know. But not so friendly are Casper's uncles, Stretch, Fatso, and Stinky, who are determined to drive all fleshies away. Okay, let's see what your cards have to say. And disclaimer, there will be spoilers that come through the reading. So if you've not seen Casper, please be mindful of that as we move forward. Also, a lot of very general messages come through. So if you find that there's a message that does not resonate for you, that's 100% okay. Don't try to force something that does not fit. Only take what resonates and leave what does not. Your first card is Diana, Queen of the Wilderness. At the bottom of the card here, it says, The language of the natural world is a frequency of love. This is my mother tongue. Okay, so immediately with this card... I'm seeing Amelia Harvey in the film, played by Amy Brenneman. She is the wife and mother of Dr. James Harvey, played by Bill Pullman, and Kat Harvey, played by Christina Ricci. And her character doesn't actually show up until the end of the film. But when she does show up, she looks a lot like Diana here, with the light glowing around her, very angelic. And I love the synchronicity. I love <laughs> when the messages come through very powerfully that just epitomize certain scenes in films. That epitomize certain scenes within films. And this is totally Amelia Harvey vibes here. I love it. We actually learn early on in the movie that she has died. And James is a paranormal therapist who has been actively trying to connect with his wife on the other side. So the main message with this card is about staying present and grounded at this time. And when Amelia appears to James, she tells him that as a ghost, she has no unfinished business because he and Kat did a wonderful job loving her when she was alive. So she basically gives him this message to let go and enjoy life with their daughter, Kat. So for some of you, I feel you lost a partner or a parent or a loved one in some capacity. And I also see some of you have been trying to contact or connect with them as well. And your loved one wants you to know that all is well, okay? In the movie... Amelia also tells James not to allow her to become his unfinished business. Sometimes 
with grief, it can cause us to hold back in life because we believe that losing someone we love means we won't ever be happy again because this person is no longer in our life. And your loved one wants you to live life to the fullest, okay? It makes them very happy to see you happy. In the film, Amelia also tells James that she will be watching over them until they can be together again. And this is the exact same message your loved one has for you. I also keep hearing, show the world what you're made of. (laughs) Spirit is now drawing me to the sentence on the bottom of the card here. At the very bottom it says, this is my mother tongue. So what I'm feeling from this, Spirit is bringing through a message about mother healing. I see some of you haven't spoken with your mother or a mother figure in a while or may even have had a falling out with your mom. Spirit is saying that communicating with each other would be very healing for both of you. And sometimes words don't even need to be spoken. The best gift we can give anyone is actually the gift of our presence. This card also comes with the message that Sometimes it's easy for us to get caught up in what's happening or what isn't happening that we forget to just be. With the Queen of the Wilderness, Spirit is also saying that getting out in nature will help bring you back into the present moment. And if you're grieving the loss of someone, nature can also help bring healing as well. There's something about nature that just helps bring emotions to the surface and helps us feel what we need to feel. And the earth is always on standby to take energy from us that no longer serves. Spirit is bringing through another scene here from the film where Casper, played by Malachi Pearson, takes Kat to his favorite place overlooking the ocean. And this is one of my favorite scenes in the film. It's very beautiful. So if you enjoy observing bodies of water, this is also a great way to get grounded. And if you're able, putting your feet in the ocean water is even better. Spirit also wants you to know that nature is also within you. You can receive powerful messages through stillness. It's just a matter of allowing your heart to hear them. Your next card is The Thinking Woman. So this card represents female energy of wisdom and understanding. So Spirit is showing me someone in your life who is bringing a higher understanding to you coming from a place of divine feminine energy. In the film, Casper the Friendly Ghost has been living in Whipstaff Manor with his three uncles, who are the ghostly trio poltergeists. They treat Casper terribly, and he longs for a friend. A woman named Kerrigan Crittenden, played by Kathy Moriarty, inherits Whipstaff Manor from her father, who recently passed away. When she goes there, she learns it's haunted and quickly hires several different people to help clear the energy out. One night, Casper sees a new story on paranormal therapist James Harvey, who helps people with spirits. Casper also sees that he has a daughter named Kat, and he is immediately taken in by her. So he goes to Kerrigan and brings up the new story on her television. From there, she hires James, and he and Kat move into Whipstaff Manor. Casper appears to Kat while she is unpacking in her room. And at first, she is scared to see a ghost, as most people would be, right? But quickly they develop an unbreakable bond and a beautiful friendship. Kat asks Casper if he remembers anything about his life, and he says that he doesn't. 
And then he asks Kat if that's a bad thing. And she says, no, it's just kind of sad. So as time goes on here, she actually starts helping him remember his life. She finds all the toys in the attic, and she sets them up to surprise Casper. So Spirit is showing me a powerful soul connection in your life who makes you feel emotionally safe. This person holds space for your feelings and encourages you to express your emotions. This could also be an aspect of yourself that's ready to blossom. You very well could be this powerful soul connection for someone else as well. And if this is the case, it's time to find your voice and let your wisdom shine as many will benefit from it. Spirit also keeps showing me this scene where Casper allows Cat to touch his hand and their energy is merged together. And I love this scene so much. So what I'm feeling from this is that some of you have a very strong gift of telepathy and have been communicating with this person through your dreams. So if you haven't met this person yet, it's only a matter of timing when you do. Now Spirit is drawing me to the stairs on the card here. Behind her in the background is this staircase. And what I'm feeling from this is the scene where Casper shows Kat his dad's invention called the up and atom machine. <laughs> so basically he has Kat sit in this chair and it begins moving, like kind of like a roller coaster. And she's taken through this series of morning routines, such as combing hair, brushing teeth, and shaving. So Spirit is pointing out the importance of having a solid daily routine to follow. If you've been wanting to manifest friends or a partner, one of the best things you can do is to put the focus on yourself and incorporate more self-care with a daily routine that involves all the things you love. <laughs> because the love you have for yourself attracts love in your outer world. I'm also being drawn to the butterfly on the card here, if you can see the butterfly here. <laughs> Spirit is showing me that a major transformation is taking place for you at this time. And also bringing through a message, a loving reminder to stay consistent. And if you find yourself overthinking about something, immerse yourself in an activity that you love to do. This will help bring you back to the present moment and also help raise your vibration. Your next card is... Sanat Kumara, light activation. And on the bottom it says, shine your light. Your internal guidance is coming through loud and clear. You are a soul who has pure intentions. And that is what Sanat Kumara symbolizes. He is a keeper of the light who is dedicated to helping the earth rise up toward the light. So I feel very strongly that you are someone who is here to assist in raising the vibration and consciousness of the planet. Spirit is also showing me that you are someone who does not do things from a place of selfish gain. You genuinely want to help people and you do so with pure intentions. And this is what brings blessings into your life because you don't expect them. In the film, Kat's father, James, goes out with Casper's three uncles. He drinks a little too much and ends up falling to his death outside of the bar. Back at Whipstaff Manor, Casper tells Kat about one of his dad's inventions, the Lazarus. It was created with the intention of bringing Casper back to life, but his father died before he could do so. Before Casper can step into the machine, Kat's dad returns home as a ghost. 
Cat is completely devastated, and Casper allows him to go in the machine instead, and the Lazarus successfully brings him back to life. Casper knew that it would be important for Cat to have her dad in her life, so he made a decision out of love and pure intention. And when he wasn't expecting it, Cat's mother Amelia shows up as an angel and grants him his wish to be alive for doing such a noble thing. And when human Casper, played by Devin Sawa, walks down the stairs to join Cat at the party she's hosting, everyone cannot take their eyes off of him. And this is the metaphor Spirit is bringing through about your light and energy. So you may be feeling called or gently nudged to step out into the world to shine your light. And if you have had any reservations about sharing your light because you don't want to be selfish, Spirit wants to reassure you that they know your intentions are pure. Your intention was pure the moment you stepped forward and said, yes, I will help Earth at this time. Your inner voice is coming through very strongly and it's okay to trust what you're hearing. And blessings are coming in for you from a pure place as well. Spirit is showing me Vic from the film, played by Garrett Henson. He is a boy at school that Kat has a crush on, and he asks her to hang out at the party. But Kat doesn't know he only asked her because a girl named Amber, played by Jessica Wesson, asked him to. So Spirit is also showing me that if someone doesn't have pure intentions, you pick up on it immediately. <laughs> and this is certainly a spiritual gift you can use to your advantage as it helps you discern energy. Your final card is the Queen of Spokes or the Queen of Cups. Okay, so this card is another reiteration of the messages coming from this Thinking Woman card here. Spirit is showing me how much love you give to the people in your life and also how loyal of a friend you are and how you stand up for those you love. This card also speaks to your strong intuition and inner voice. In the film, Kat has Casper's back no matter what. Kerrigan Crittenden, who inherited Whipstaff Manor, is sure there is a treasure in the house that belongs to her. Casper had mentioned how his treasure was in a vault, so Kerrigan proceeds to try to kill her acquaintance Dibs, played by Eric Idle, so he can go into the vault and get the treasure and then wants him to use the Lazarus machine to bring him back to life. But what happens is <laughs> Kerrigan actually ends up dying instead by falling off of a cliff. <laughs> and she returns as a ghost and she grabs the treasure from the vault. And this is the moment where Kat steps in and she uses her intuition to ask Kerrigan what her unfinished business is because all ghosts have unfinished business. Kerrigan says she has no unfinished business because she has everything she wants. And at this moment, this is when lights start shooting out of Kerrigan, indicating that she is ready to cross over. <laughs> so she crosses over and it's revealed that there's only a baseball glove and a ball instead inside of the chest. And these were prized possessions of Casper's. And to him, they were treasure. <laughs> it's pretty cute and funny. But Spirit is showing me how you've used your wit and intuition to get out of sticky situations in the past. Just like Kat used her intuition to get the better of Kerrigan in this situation. And I'm also seeing how you've stood up for others who may have, you know, been taken advantage of or bullied. 
you are someone who rules with love and love is always going to help you come out on top, my friend. So thank you for sharing your light. Thank you for your love. And thank you for your kindness and compassion that you exude into the world. It is very much needed and very appreciated. Beautiful, beautiful messages coming from the 1995 film Casper. Thank you so much for being here. If your reading resonated, if you enjoyed it, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below. Thank you again for being here. I love you all so much, and I will see you on the next video. Bye. Hello to everyone who chose pile number three. I am so grateful that you are here. Your ghost film is the 1984 movie Ghostbusters, directed by Ivan Reitman, starring Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, and Sigourney Weaver. And the synopsis says, After losing their academic post at a prestigious university, a team of parapsychologists goes into business as proton pack toting ghostbusters who exterminate ghouls, hobgoblins, and supernatural pests of all stripes. An ad campaign pays off when a knockout cellist hires the squad to purge her swanky digs of demons that appear to be living in her refrigerator. Okay, so let's see what your cards have to say, and disclaimer, there will be spoilers that come through the reading, so if you've not seen Ghostbusters, please be mindful of that as we move forward. Also, a lot of very general messages come through, so if you find that a message does not resonate for you, don't try to force something that does not fit, only take what resonates and leave what does not. Your first card is Yamoja, the goddess of all that flows. And on the bottom here, it says, I am an ocean of creative energy. I give birth to what exists within me. Okay, so... First off, I am feeling that you have been doing a lot, and I mean a lot, of shadow work. With this card, I am getting vibes of Gozer from the film Ghostbusters. And Gozer is played by Slavica Jovan. Totally looks like Gozer, right? <laughs> so... In the movie, however, Gozer is one of the main ghost villains that shows up at the end. And her essence is where I am feeling the shadow work energy coming through very strongly. But Yamoja on this card looks very vitalized. So this feels like the version of you that is emerging due to the shadow work that you have done. And the card also states, the goddess of all that flows. So perhaps this is a time where you're finding that things are flowing more naturally and easily to you because of all the purging and letting go that you've done. I also feel that you're in a place where you are embracing your shadow and also tapping into a lot of creative energy. You may feel a nudge to start creating something that you're passionate about. Also, if you've been feeling stuck lately, the shadow work that you've been doing has helped you release a lot of that stuck energy. So things are or will be flowing easily soon if you have yet to see that happen. I'm also seeing that water is an element you resonate with deeply. You may love to watch bodies of water or even immerse yourself in a water as a way to ground and protect your energy. I'm seeing that even walking alongside a body of water is very healing for you. So spirit is now showing me 
the scene in Ghostbusters where Gozer asks one of the Ghostbusters, Ray, played by Dan Aykroyd, if he is a god. He tells her no, and she zaps all of the Ghostbusters with electricity from her hands. So I'm seeing that some of you work very closely with Ascended Masters and the Council of Light. And you've received strong guidance and resources to help you heal deep wounds. It's almost an energy of feeling lost and not knowing what to do. And then one of the Ascended Masters steps in and provides you with the answer you've been looking for. But I also feel like members from the Council of Light are sending messages to help you remember how powerful you are and how you have the ability to heal yourself from anything. So in the movie, when Gozer asks Ray if he is a god, it's like a metaphor of the Council of Light asking you to remember the god source energy that already exists within you. And on the card, it literally states, I give birth to what exists within me at the very bottom here. Very cool. So you're being called to draw from your own inner strength and birth this energy into your physical reality. Spirit is also showing me Janine Melnitz, played by Annie Potts in the film. She is someone who works for the Ghostbusters and answers the phone when customers call. So Spirit is bringing through a message of answering the call coming through for you at this time. I strongly feel some of you are meant to work with the spiritual realm. I also see some of you have a job where you take incoming calls or make outbound calls. Spirit is showing me that messages come through from the people that you speak with. So it's important to pay attention to what's being said. I'm also hearing that some of the most important messages are coming from people you find to be difficult. These people could be reflecting your own shadow to you or could be bringing a message of something to heal within yourself. I'm now seeing the scene where a ghost is very attracted to Ray in the film and she proceeds to have a sexual interaction with him. I also feel some of you are working on healing your sexual energy by balancing both masculine and feminine energies within each chakra. There is a YouTube channel called Goddess of the Oracle, and she has activations to help heal sexual energy. And her activations are very, very powerful, so it's important to drink plenty of water and make sure you are grounded if you decide to listen to one. And also be prepared for strong messages to come through the dream state, letting you know what to heal within yourself. And when it comes to sexual energy, it is also our creative energy. So protecting it and knowing how to transmute would be very beneficial for you at this time, my friend. Your next card is The Thinking Man. Okay, so with this card, I'm being shown Peter Venkman, played by Bill Murray and Dana, played by Sigourney Weaver. And the card here shows a man looking at a diamond in his hand. See, he has a diamond in his hand here and he's just in awe of the diamond. And in the film, this is exactly how Peter views Dana in the film like the diamond she is. So I feel there's a masculine energy, regardless of gender, who views someone with a feminine energy in this exact way. This person values and loves someone unconditionally here. So this is either someone who sees you in this way or you see someone in this way. In the movie, Peter is also very intelligent and works with a lot of clients. 
and I'm being shown how in the beginning he is helping a man and woman tap into their psychic abilities. So I feel some of you actually help people tap into their spiritual gifts, or you could even do psychic readings in some way for people. I also feel some of you have a degree in psychology or something even science-based. I'm also picking up on a very high level of sarcasm. <laughs> you are someone who is really funny, and people tend to leave with a smile on their face after interacting with you. With the thinking man, spirit is showing me that overthinking can become a distraction for you from time to time. So it's important to return to your inner peace and breathe when this happens. Trust the intelligence within you. Now spirit is showing me the scene in the film when Peter goes to meet Dana for a date they have. He knocks on her apartment door and she answers the door in a very sexy manner wearing a red dress. She is possessed by a spirit named Zul, but instead of running away, Peter stays with her. So I feel like some of you are in the process of manifesting someone like this into your life, or you are already in a relationship with someone who has these qualities. I feel an energy of always being by each other's side, and especially during sickness. Whoever this person is, their love is unconditional and they do not get scared away when bad circumstances arise. They understand that there are difficult times in life, and this is when connection, presence, and love are even more essential and needed. This is someone who stays with loved ones through thick and thin. So I'm picking up on someone being afraid that someone is going to leave due to them being sick or feeling like a burden. I also see some of you have experienced someone doing this in the past. Spirit is saying that those days are over and the past is in the past. Focus on the people who do show up with love for you, okay? And love these people hard in the present moment right now. Your next card is Dewal Cool, Dharma Unfolding. And on the bottom here, it says, remember that you are on a path. Take one step at a time to happiness. Okay, so with this card, it indicates that everything is unfolding as it's supposed to in your life. There's also a message coming through about crossing paths with people. And I do feel like these are karmic connections. In the film, Egon, played by Harold Ramis, and the other Ghostbusters, what they do is they develop this high-tech equipment to help capture ghosts. And there's one scene where they haven't properly tested the equipment, and Egon warns the others that crossing the energy streams could cause a catastrophic explosion. So I feel some of you are dealing with some difficult people right now. And Spirit wants you to know that when karmic connections show up in our life, it's a test. How you choose to respond to these people is what matters. But also that karmic connections are a part of your journey as well. I'm drawn to the statement on the card here that says, take one step at a time to happiness. So the most important thing Spirit is saying here is to keep moving forward. And as you encounter different people and situations on your journey, ask yourself what these people or situations are trying to teach you. Each lesson you learn is more wisdom gained. Perhaps there's a need for healthier boundaries or learning to walk away from what no longer serves you. You're going to cross paths with a multitude of people on your journey, but it doesn't have to result in a catastrophic explosion. Ask yourself what makes you happy 
and act accordingly. And your last card is the Eight of Dice or the Eight of Swords. So when I see this card, it tends to always represent a self-imposed prison energy. So what I'm seeing here is how there's something in your life that doesn't make you happy. And Spirit is asking you why you continue to stay committed to things that don't make you happy. I'm being shown Dana and Louis Tolley, played by Rick Moranis. They both get possessed by spirits called the Gatekeeper and the Keymaster. And both of their roles are crucial to the destruction that wants to take place in the film. But the Ghostbusters end up saving the day, and Dana and Lewis are freed. I'm seeing how they were inside some of these, like, stone statues, and they broke out of them at the end. So if you feel stuck in a situation or unhappy, Spirit is saying you don't have to remain inside that stone statue. You can change your situation anytime you want, but continuing to believe that you are stuck will continue to manifest as such. The truth is that none of us are ever stuck. It's just a matter of choosing to believe that. And perhaps the key to getting unstuck is to choose yourself and your happiness and not staying in situations in order to make others happy because you deserve the best, my friend. Wow. Powerful messages coming through the 1984 film, Ghostbusters. Thank you so much for being here. If your reading resonated, if you enjoyed it, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below. Thank you again for being here. I love you all so much, and I will see you on the next video. Bye.